Hi guys, this is AP Chemistry Topic 8.7, pH and pKa. Today's objective, explain the relationship between the predominant form of a weak acid or basin solution at a given pH and the pKa of the conjugate acid or the pKb of a conjugate base. So we're going to look at the protonation of an acid or a base and how that will, how you can tell what it is based on using something called an indicator. Ooh, that was bad. Bad timing. So we have a, in this generic base acid-base reaction, we have HA plus H2O producing hydronium ion and then your anion. So that we know that the constant would be hydronium ion times anion over the acid, the concentrations, that's the Ka. If we take the negative log of this equation, we get the pKa essentially. Or we can arrange it to look at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which we'll talk about in a couple more units, and it's shown there. pH equals pKa plus the log of the anion over the acid. The pH of a weak acid solution will be equal to the pKa of the acid when the, hydro the acid and the anion concentrations are both equal. You also see this in the Ka expression that when these two are equal, then the Ka equals the hydrogen ion concentration, so that the pKa will be equal to the pH. <clears throat> if you were to add more strong acid to a solution with an equal molarity of AI, A minus and the HA, you know that reaction will shift accordingly. Chatelier's principle predicts that the reaction will consume the addition of the acid, and in doing so will consume the A minus, producing more HA and cause that ratio to change. If the pH is less than the pKa, then we know that this ratio here must be less than 1. There must be more of the HA, the protonated weak acid, than there is of the conjugate base. If your pH, so this is important here, so all this right here. If your pH is less than the pKa, I'm repeating this, that must mean the, the anion is, the anion ratio must be less than 1. There must be more of the protonated weak acid if your pH is less than the pKa. If your pH is greater than the pKa, then the ratio must be greater than 1. And then the concentration of the anion, the conjugate base, I keep saying anion, but the conjugate base will be greater than the protonated weak acid. When we talk about titrations, we were talking about adding acid to a base or the other way around, and then the ratios like this that we're talking about now, they change. When, they, when the moles of the acid and base are equal, we call this equivalence point. And a way to see that is by looking at it using indicators to change the pH. Acid-based indicators are useful in determining the pH of a solution without using pH meters. At specific pH values, they will change, the color will change, as the indicator gains or loses hydrogens. You have to choose the correct indicator for whatever you're interested in using. So that's what we're going to have to be looking at in a bit. When choosing the correct indicator for a particular reaction, it is important to find the indicator that has a color change at the equivalence point of the acid-base neutralization. So if you have a strong base and a strong acid, you need a indicator that has a color change at 7. If you have a weak acid and a strong base, the conjugate base of the weak acid is in solution, so you're going to want you're going to end up with a pH of seven. You have to use a indicator with a pH of greater than seven. Weak base and strong acid, your equivalence point will be pH of less than seven because 
you have your acid, your conjugate acid in solution. So we're going to see, we're going to see a few examples and hopefully that clears things up. Okay, so you're going to want to refer to this slide um, because the copies that you have are, in are not in color, so you can't really tell what's going on. So here it is a layout of the different indicators that they can potentially be used and the ranges that you see them, the color changes. So just for example, bromophenol blue, its range, if you will, is from 3 to about 4.7, it looks like. So you see that that's where the color, you can see the color change. So you want to pick the right pH, right indicator based on your the pH of what you have in the problem. What is the, the, the best, um, how should I put this? What is the best one to pick based on the, um, based on what you're reacting with? What's reacting? And from there you pick the correct indicator. Or it may say which color is more prevalent based on what is present in the solution type of deal. When you choose an indicator, you want to make sure the color change in the is in the steepest portion of the titration, so you can see it changing over time. Uh, find an indicator. Oop, I didn't do the sound. Find an indicator with a color change that corresponds to your pH in the middle. So. As you can see, see that's all right. So let's look at the first one: monoprotic acid and bases. All these are monoprotic. Product. So a strong base, a strong acid. The pH, oops, the pH change. That's all right here, obviously. So this is where the color change will occur. It's where you want it to be. So it's definitely in the pH of seven. That's where the equivalence point is right there if you have a strong acid and a strong base acid sorry strong acid added to a weak base the pH is looks like it's about five five ish so like that and then you most likely have to pick the right one or know what what is going to be present indicators strongly absorb light so you can see the colors in solution even at low concentrations so in order for this is this is something to kind of keep in mind I guess abstractly in order to see one color over another there needs to be 10 times more of the form either the either the protonated form or the deprotonated form that's what I'm talking about here so the protonated or the deprotonated meaning it's gone So your indicator reaction can be shown as the following. So you have a protonated plus water produces hydronium ion and the deprotonated form because the proton goes to the water. Therefore, your hydronium ion times your deprotonated form over the protonated form, that's your Ka, and you can kind of just see what's going on with the henderson hasselbach equation. Excuse me. So, alizarin red S is an acid base indicator that changes from pH from red to yellow uh, around pH four to five point five. Remember that indicators are chemicals that have different colors when protonated and deprotonated. Would the protonated or deprotonated form of alizarin red be <laughs> alizarin red S be red? Explain your reasoning. We know that so as the pH decreases, your concentration of hydrogen ions increase. By increasing the concentration of hydrogen ions that would have more indicator molecules that have protons attached to them so that the protonated form would be red when the pH is the lowest and the deprotonated form would be yellow when the pH is the highest. 
So would the protonated or the deprotonated form of alizarin red S be red? Explain your reasoning. The protonated form would be red. Oh my God. Would be red. As there, ooh, you can see that. As there are more indicator molecules having protons attached to them. Since or because oh, since mm, this is because as the pH decreases, so does oh, so the concentration of hydrogen ions increase. Would this indicator be useful or effective for titration with sodium hydroxide of an acetic acid solution, pKa, pKa of 4.75, or the titration of hydrochloric acid? So when you're adding, wait, so you're titrating, titration, wait, would this be more effective for titration with, blah, 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 blah. Would this indicator be effective for titration of sodium hydroxide, with sodium hydroxide of an acetic acid, or the titration of hydrochloric acid? After titrating acetic acid to, to its equivalence point, you will have more conjugate base remaining in solution. So this would mean that your pH is going to be greater than 7 because there's still more conjugate base. The equivalence point of sodium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid, they're both strong, would be 7. Because they are both strong, their conjugate base and acid have negligible, negligible acidic or basic properties. Because of this, and since the HCl has an equivalence point closer to towards alizar and red, the endpoint of it, it would be better to titrate. It would, be, it would be better to use this indicator with hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide than the other way around. <clears throat> So just a reminder, uh, earlier I talked about if you have a weak acid and a strong base, your equivalence point will be greater than 7 because of where the pK is. If I have a strong acid and a strong base, the equivalence point is 7. If we kind of remember those charts where we're adding, a few slides back, when you're adding a, a base and an acid, or adding a base to an acid, I'm sorry, that range of it in like, something like this. So the pH, volume, so something like, sort of like this, I guess. Versus over here, so this range here where it is reaching its equivalence point is closer to this towards it's closer to the range of the indicators over here compared to over here where the range is above the equivalence point is above this range for this particular indicator so without since it's not this indicator would not be good to use for this one which is the 
NaOH and acetic acid because the general range of this is far higher than the range of the actual pH for the indicator that you want to use. I hope that makes sense. <coughs> The pKa of nitrous acid HNO3 is 3.16. A buffer solution is made by mixing the acid and sodium nitrite. When bromophenol blue is added to a mixture of added to the mixture, a blue color is formed or can be observed. Which species is present in a greater amount? The protonated HNO2 or the deprotonated nitrite ion? <coughs> So let's look at, so what they may give you is they may give you a list, like something like this, it's possible, and they can see, you can see where bromophenol blue will take place, where it would show up, where the blue color would show up, so it'd be right around here somewhere. So of the two, <clears throat> of the two different forms, which would be in the greatest amount, if we know that you know, a smaller pH means there's more hydrogens, more hydrogen ions, I'm sorry. Uh, as the pH increases, the concentration of, ion, of hydrogen ions decrease. So which species is in greater amount if we have a blue color? The deprotonated... And O2, 1 minus. Would be more prevalent. So not too bad. That was easy. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.